Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and I have a question for you all today. What is your favorite crypto if you could not pick XRP? The reason I am asking you guys this is because I noticed a lot of you all are 100% into XRP and if you've watched my videos for a little while, you most likely know that I hold XRP but it's not 100% of my portfolio. I think it's very smart to diversify and I want to see a couple of different coins in the comment section that are not, um, you know, let's say extremely low market cap, just some good coins. No, I don't want to see any shit coins down there. And I want you guys to just quickly just maybe check it out in the comment section what other people are saying. Make sure you mind yourself very much though that there's going to be some scammers. There's going to be some people trying to promote some really scammy ass coins. Be careful with that. Uh, but it could also be some, you know, fun to see ex people explain, for example, why they like ADA or who knows. All right. This article here asked, is this a good time to enter the market and buy Ripple's XRP? This is a little bit wrong, but all right. Is it a good time? Well, what is the price looking at? Okay. So we've talked previously about the lower the price goes, the better it is to buy. The price hit about $2 two months ago, since it's right now 60 cents. It's about one third of what it was then. Well, sounds to me like a pretty reasonable idea, right? Sounds pretty damn reasonable. And that is the, the fact, the key, the everything behind it. It is knowing when to enter into the market. It is partially about time in the market rather than timing. But I would say that's mostly dependent on what exactly you're talking about. If we're talking about just buying a new crypto, I would always say, I'm just buying it. I don't care exactly what the price is at. But if we're talking about adding to my position where I'm cautiously waiting for a certain specific price point, I'm always going to say, man, make sure you have a layering strategy in place and just buy your way down. But 60 cents definitely sounds quite reasonable to me. Then Ripple uses Crypto Mom's criticism of SEC for its defense. It's actually pretty funny, but Hester Pierce is often talked about as Crypto Mom, and her being critical of the SEC is actually a key for Ripple right now. I mean, that's actually pretty funny how that goes, that the SEC's own statements and the Crypto Mom here has actually become a key for Ripple's lawsuit. So it's pretty funny how the SEC is kind of winning Ripple over and also destroying them at the same time. It's like it's a funny contrast. Ripple client Airwallex Unicorn launches solution for online car payments in Australia. Ripple net client Australian Unicorn Airwallet, or Wally, I'm not sure, Wallex, is offering an online car payment tool to its users. So, Airwallex solution for online payments through Visa and MasterCard, Airwallex raises 160 mil, and Ripple client DLoco raises 617 million in an IPO. According to pay papers, whatever, one of the three Australian unicorns companies valued over a billion dollars, Airwallex is launching a platform for online car payments in Australia. It's been using RippleNet since freaking 2017, which is pretty damn crazy. Now, this solution for online payments through Visa and MasterCard, the company first rolled out a solution in the UK and Europe last year, and it then moved to Hong Kong in 2021. Now the company widens its expansion and is kicking off in Australia, offering a new online payment solution to local customers. Using the company's new solution, small to medium enterprises, which is Ripple's focus, and large companies will have an easy way to gather online payments made via Visa and MasterCard bank cards from clients scattered in various corners of the globe. And that's actually a really important part, guys. Think about it. If you, for example, have a website or you're just a company that sends invoices around, there's still a little bit of a question about how you can take somebody else's credit card, theoretically speaking, right? Like, what provider are you going to use to accept this payment? And if the provider is actually a partner of Ripple, it's going to be a lot easier to also transfer over into a standard, for example, where XRP can be accepted by all these partners which are already accepting your, you know, the credit cards basically through that provider. And then it's also raised $160 million, just becoming a little bit bigger. I guess that's nice to see. And also the local, which we've talked about before, has a uh, has raised 600 or is going to raise or has raised 617 million dollars. Ripple client DLoco is one of the payment platforms that is working and prospering in these regions. It has recently conducted an IPO in the U.S., raking in over 670 million dollars. And I don't like the name personally. I would never have chosen DLoco. Uh, then again, 670 million dollars. They're the boss of me, I guess, huh? Uh, RBI, for all of my Indian watchers, RBI working on digital currency pilot projects likely in the near future, Deputy Governor T. Ravi Sankar has said. Good, not necessarily perfect, but good. 
because they have been all over the place with crypto, but this stance, I guess, is just really progressive and I can't really say anything negative about it. A couple things I should quickly say. First of all, make sure you check out the Bybit competition. A link is down below. I don't know if I said it at the start of the video. I don't think I did. Make sure you check it out. Uh, there's 30,000 XRP to be won. So right now, there's just a couple of days left, just four or five more days to actually win into this competition. So check it out once more. All you need is 300 XRP in your account. You don't need to pay this to anybody and make a couple of trades and bada boom, bada bing, you might win yourself a huge sum of XRP. Pretty funny, we talked before about the ranking and about how I speak. Yeah, he also actually texted me on Discord saying, yeah, I made it into a video. Pretty funny. Let's quickly see if he's still at the top. Yes, he still is. All right, so I talked with him before on Discord. If any of you watching right now are in this top list, Shoot me a little message over on Discord. I want to see. It's pretty funny, though. Look at this battle, by the way, for the number one spot. This is basically the profit and loss that they are in with their trades. And it's pretty funny because, theoretically speaking, this guy could have deposited 300 XRP, made one trade, and win himself 22.500 XRP. So that's, that's a pretty nice return on your, uh, you know, trial, basically. So once more, go check it out. A lot of things are still possible. We still have a couple of days to go. Also, check out my Instagram, the link's down below too. I post a lot of things in my story, a lot of personal stuff, if you like that type of thing. So make sure you check it out. I also have a really cool video on there. Just go check it out, the link's down below. All right, one thing I wanted to show you guys before we move on is this one right here. This is what the average Bitcoin investor looks like right now. Well, not completely true, but there was a survey of over a thousand American investment habits. And basically, it's, in my opinion, pretty funny that of all these people that are investing, 11% male, 3% female are investment uh, investors. So basically, three, four times-ish the amount of males are in this space rather than females. And you can also kind of see that back in my videos as well. If you look at the comment section, the majority is male. If you look at the views, the majority is male. I'm going to say 95 to 98% is male. Also, the age, I would say not ever anybody below 18, at least not on YouTube, it doesn't say like that. Most likely there are a couple of people though, but the majority, I would say, are between 24 and 40. Let's say something like that, right? A little bit of a, not, not the 18-year-olds, not the 60-year-olds, it's kind of in the middle. But of course, everybody is welcome here on the channel. If you're a 95, you're still welcome. I don't think you can still understand me because I might speak too fast for a lot of people, but everybody's welcome, all right? Actually, I've heard that a couple of times before, that if I were to speak slower, that I would actually attract a broader audience, which I'm looking into all the time, but talking slow for me, this is already my slow mode. I already try my best to talk as slow and as articulate as possible, but it's not as simple. I don't know, maybe it's just my, uh, my mental game is not strong enough. Then Tyler Winklevoss is back at it again. Attempted to explain the root cause of inflation as a supply chain issue and not a monetary printing issue is Orwellian grade sophistry. Do our dear leaders think we don't understand basic arithmetic and supply and demand? Two things to say. One, supply chain issue is partially a real thing. So, I mean, it is. But saying that the root of cause of inflation is that, of course, is, is kind of odd. Uh, I would say, however, that the majority of people actually know that it's about the printing, right? I, I'm not going to kind of argue. I don't think many people would argue with that. And I don't know exactly why he put that up. Maybe just because he wants to push Bitcoin to a certain direction again. I'm not sure what I think about Tyler Winklevoss and the twins in general. I mean, they have an exchange, so obviously they're biased. They own a lot of Bitcoin. They're one of the, or some of the biggest Bitcoin holders, so obviously they're biased. Then again, they also speak truth. And obviously we are into Bitcoin and we are into crypto because we agree with the majority of these types of statements, where, for example, the, the state or the United States, with the dollar, it's a lot of printing, a lot of inflation, right? We can't really deny that. So from that perspective, I guess I can kind of have to support him. I also had an article about that somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where it was anymore. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but let's just cover the articles the way we have them. Crypto investors are facing severe volatility and regulatory crackdowns, says Bitstamp CEO. What does it mean? Well, it means that the space is adapting. It means that we are progressing and things are looking pretty damn good. A couple of negative articles and negativity will be in there in the midst, but that's all part of progress. There's no progress without pain. And there's most likely a better analogy or a better little saying for that, but there's no progress in this specific sense here without pain. On the same Binance type of look, like we saw right here, Binance US is looking for an IPO, says CZ. CZ is the CEO of Binance. Crypto exchange Binance.us is eyeing an IPO 
Zell is also looking for a new Binance CEO with a very strong regulatory background, which might be for two main reasons. One, it could be because he does not want the responsibility to actually be sued anymore. He wants to kind of step down from that part. Uh, second, because, I mean, he's a most likely a billionaire in terms of net worth, and so he wants to take a step back. Uh, or he's actually talking about a Binance US CEO with a regulatory background, but that would be kind of sad because they already have a CEO. And him saying it like that is, I don't know, it's kind of, oh, we're looking for a new CEO. Yeah, we already have one, but we're, we're looking for a new one. But I believe he's talking about a new Binance CEO because he right now is the CEO of Binance, uh, but also founder. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Pretty interesting though. Patty XRP posted, how dare Flare Finance decide to offer their entire protocol on Songbird Network? Now I have to worry about more taxes because I will be earning more yield than I planned for. Shit post. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend. So this is pretty funny. It has two sides. One is the fact that people are complaining about more taxes. Second of all, it's the complete truth, right? I mean, you get more money, which is why you have to pay more tax. So it can be annoying the fact that you have to look for more things. But then again, you're still making money ultimately. So uh, one of the biggest complaints that saw people having is that the fact that if Songbird, for example, gets distributed a little bit later... They're going to have to pay tax on the value that it's at at that point. So that might mean you have to pay more tax on, on, on your money. Then again, it also means you've gotten more money in, in the end of things. So ultimately, it's not that big a deal. It might be a little bit more annoying, but it's not bad because it's free. So as long as you do your due diligence and you know pay it properly, I don't think there should be any negative side to it. It might be annoying, but you're getting more free money than you bargained for. So let's quickly see. We had one more article here. Billionaire Thomas Petterfry. Petterfy owns cryptocurrency to play the odds. A lot of people do that most likely. We also saw it in this article right here. A lot of people are just buying this because of a you know a risky type of thing in their heads where they just want to take some extra risk to get some extra profit. I personally am into it because I believe firmly in technology. The majority of people in it though do not understand the technology and are just dabbling into it for the for the sake of buying some. Maybe they're friends, maybe them some news, maybe some you know manipulation in terms of news. Or maybe just because they want to take a little bit of risk and some others because they want to get rich with just a small amount of money. Who knows? But yeah. All right, guys, that was for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today. Thank you all.